Hello everyone, it's Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything, and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode review. This time we will be going over episode 64 of Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's, the duel between Luke and Tiger. A duel that I have wanted to see since probably Tiger debuted in this show. We have gotten um, a lot of really interesting duels in the last few um, episodes and of course next week we're getting a super interesting duel so the dual quality matchups I think have been very good but have the episodes been living up to the quality of duels I thought Luke versus Roa was a little underwhelming what did I think of this episode well I thought it was an okay episode um I liked it I didn't really love it. Um, I thought we got a lot of good backstory with the uh, Luke family, which I liked that aspect a lot. But I do feel like it's been kind of a weird route that they have gone, giving Luke three straight victories. I feel like it's getting a little repetitive. I feel like it's getting a little predictable, I suppose. I mean, what Luke has done in this show and really what the writers have allowed him to do is unprecedented. I mean, Luke has now won his first 17 duels. And I know we've had undefeated protagonists before. I know Yusei never lost. I know Yusaku, Playmaker, never lost. But Playmaker and Yusei did not start their dueling careers going 17-0. and 0. One of Yusei's first duels was against Jack, which was, I believe, a no result. So he did not win his first 17 duels. And I think his no result slash loss against Kiadu was also within his first 17. And Playmaker had a draw against Revolver in episode 10 of Yu-Gi-Oh! Brains. So neither of those undefeated, untouchable protagonists won their first 17 duels. I mean, they didn't even win their first five duels, if you want to be technical. So this is something incredibly unprecedented that we have never seen as Yu-Gi-Oh fans. And while I think that is fascinating, it, it just leads to the question of when will that payoff occur? They know that Luke's undefeated streak is one of the most interesting aspects that they have of Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s right now. At least it is to me. And while I think some people are getting a little annoyed by it, and maybe understandably so, I really do believe that the payoff is going to be massive. And I think it needs to be massive whenever Luke loses a duel. And so going into this matchup against Tiger, I don't think it really made sense for Tiger to be the one to end the streak. I really am starting to view Luke's undefeated streak like the Undertaker's streak. And you kept wondering every single WrestleMania, who's going to be the one to end it? Who needs that push? Who's going to be the one that will go down in the history books to finally defeat the Undertaker. And while, of course, wrestling is scripted in the results, so is Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, it's not like, it's not a sport team going undefeated where you genuinely don't know who's going to beat them. It's literally the writing staff deciding who is going to beat this character, just like the writers in WWE decided who is going to beat The Undertaker. So I feel like that is an incredibly fair comparison, and that is how I am viewing this undefeated streak. And so going into this duel, just like Luke versus Roa last week, I wasn't really anticipating Luke to lose. And so it takes the unpredictability, in my opinion, out of the duel, and it kind of takes me out of the duel a little bit. And so that's why three straight Luke episodes I, I didn't really love, and I, I thought this one was kind of... I think I'm getting a little fatigued from the Luke episodes, even though it's only been three in a row. That's a lot. I mean, Luke has now dueled double the amount of times this arc than Yuga has dueled. Luke has dueled four times. Yuga has only dueled twice. And so for the people that feel that Luke is almost the protagonist of the show, which he's not... He has felt like the protagonist of this arc. That That's definitely for sure. But there were aspects of this episode that I really, really enjoyed. The first being, as I mentioned earlier, the backstory on the Kamijo family. First of all, the fact that it's abbreviated KGC, very similar to KC, which is Kaiba Corporation. You might have a little bit of an ode to the Kaiba Corporation there. At least that's the, uh, the thought that I got. It might not have been intentional, but it... It, it's close enough where I think you can make the case that it was definitely an ode and a reference. And as 
we see most families work, especially older. I feel like this was kind of an older thing, but maybe it's still more of a traditional thing with royalty, where the person who inherits the entire family name and the company and the legacy is the firstborn male. That, I always felt, is kind of an older tradition. Maybe it's still something that some families follow. It, it probably is. And so even though Tiger is the older sibling, all of the responsibility is going to go to Luke. So we understand why Luke hates Gears and why his monsters are based off of Gears because that's literally been his whole life. He was born into a family of Gears and his entire life is going to be based around Gears if he follows his family's legacy. And I actually admire Luke in this episode and in general for not wanting to go down that route, for wanting to go down his own path. I think a lot of people fall into that trap in the real world, and that's something that a lot of people can probably relate to, uh, where they kind of follow in their family's footsteps. If you have a family-owned business in, you know, electrical work, you're probably going to grow up with a lot of pressure to be an electrician and follow in your family's footsteps, especially if it's been like a five-generation business, even though maybe your passion is not in being an electrician. Maybe your passion is being a teacher, but there's so much pressure on you from an early age to follow in your family's legacy that you never actually chase your dreams and you end up owning the family business, but maybe not being happy and not living as fulfilling of a life as you potentially could be. And so that's why it was funny when Roman was like, oh man, we're talking about life now. And I was like, yeah, you know, that's actually one of the deeper things that Sevens has discussed. I think probably in the entire show. And so I do applaud them for that because there's a lot of people, friends that I know, people that I've talked to that I think can really relate to that where there is an immense amount of pressure on you to follow in your family's legacy, especially if they have a in a business. I mean, in this case, it's an empire, right? I mean, it literally is an empire, the, the Camillo family. And there's a lot of pressure to just do the status quo and follow your family's footsteps. Uh, but Luke does not want to do that. And so I did respect Luke quite a bit for that. And he finally, you know, quote unquote, stands up to his sister. I think the relationship between Tiger and Luke is dysfunctional. I know Luke is a doofus. And in this case, he's betrayed his friends. I mean, he really has. So, like, I understand that. But even before that, Tiger has been overly harsh to Luke, and she definitely cares about Luke, which we saw when, you know, she told, talked to Yuga that Luke had left the mansion and never returned. Like, it's evident that Tiger cares about him, but still, she's very aggressive, she's very harsh, she's very mean, she's the typical older sibling times three, and so it is a little bit of a dysfunctional relationship. So to see Luke kind of stand up to her. I know he needed to become the Luke man in order to do that. I thought it was good character development for him in this episode. But something that I didn't love is Yuga, Roman, and Gakuto were in the area. I would have liked them to at least try to talk to Luke. That was another thing that I, I didn't really like about this episode. And maybe you can just say they didn't have the chance because of how uh, intense Tiger is and Tiger felt personally attacked by Luke dissing the, the family name and, and kind of disgracing the family name, if you will. But I thought it would have been in character for Roman to yell something at him or for them to have a little bit of a conversation like, hey, why did you join UO? Why did you go against us? Why are you doing this? You know, and, and so... That was another aspect of the episode that I didn't really love. We didn't really get that sort of dialogue, and we might get that in future episodes, but that was something that I wish we saw expanded on a little bit. The duel itself was really cool. It was very repetitive. I mean, Luke Man did exactly what he did against UO, just activated the other effect of Dragius F in order to get the win over Tiger, and I liked how... Um, kind of shaken up Tiger was at the end where she was literally unconscious. Yuo grabs Luke and uses him as a puppet and basically says, this is my puppet. I love the symbolism pulling the strings up back into the six Ross, which was symbolism of him uh, pulling the strings of Luke and pulling the strings of this entire operation of getting Luke to join the Goha presidents and join the six siblings. Very interesting piece of dialogue at the end of this episode when Yuga and Euro have a bit of a conversation, and Yuga says to Euro, I need your help. We see him saying something to Euro, but we don't know what's being said. And Euro says, what? And then Yugo just smiles, and the episode fades to black. So Yuga is up to something, as he always is. 
There's been some theories that he planted Luke to be the sixth sibling so that Luke could turn on UO. I would be very shocked if that is the case. I think this is just Luke being an idiot. I, I really think that's what it boils down to. Maybe Yuga revealed to Euro that he knows who the actual six sibling is. Maybe he revealed to Euro that he knows where to get fusion. I, I, I don't know. There's a lot that he could have said. There really is. And that is very exciting. And of course, it adds a dimension to Yuga's character in this arc that we have not really seen where Yuga is one step ahead. We've seen it the entire show. And it always seems like he's saving his master plan to be executed and explored in the final few episodes of this arc. We know we have three episodes left as this arc is ending in episode 67. And so we will see how this plays out. Next week, Nail Asana. Man, oh man, that is a clash of... In my opinion, the two strongest duelists in the show when you remove the main four. So I'm very excited to see how that goes. No idea if the score is still a thing. Uh, I, I do have a little bit of an issue with that because Sevens has been inconsistent with its scoring before. In the previous arc, they said if you lose a duel, your team loses seven points. And then when we got to the semifinals, or the finals I should say, between Team Luke and Team Yuga... Team Yuga lost, Roa lost to Roman, and they did not lose seven points. So Sevens has been very inconsistent when it comes to scoring. I think it would have been nice if for five seconds this episode, or maybe even last week, you just updated us on the score. It should be five to four Goha siblings, but the last we knew of the score, it was three to three. So, you know, Sevens has just been kind of weird when it comes to point scoring that I wish they kind of showed us or just kept us in the loop and said, hey, this is still a thing, or hey, this isn't a thing anymore, but who knows. Another very interesting thing, I know I'm kind of bouncing here at the end, is Yuo did not know why Luke did not have fusion against Roa. That's kind of weird to me, because I was under the impression that Yuo was responsible for the Luke man, and that the doll was responsible for the Luke man, and they were the ones that gave Luke fusion to begin with. So the fact that Yuo says to doll he didn't seem to have fusion would imply that Yuo was not responsible for giving Luke the fusion spell card. So does that mean that maybe Dahl is responsible and is keeping something from Yuo? Does that mean that something else is going on entirely here and the Luke man is maybe not associated with Dahl or with Yuo? I don't know. That piece of dialogue was also very strange. But guys, let me know what you thought of episode 64. I thought it was a good episode. I thought it was one of the weaker episodes this arc, to be honest, but it was still fine. It wasn't a bad episode by any means. There were just some aspects of it that I thought were a little repetitive and that I thought the show maybe did a little differently. And of course, it would have been great if Tiger got the win, but I just felt like she wasn't the character that should be the one to end the streak because this is obviously going to be a massive payoff whenever the streak does end. But guys, thank you so much for listening to my thoughts on episode 64. Let me know all of your thoughts down below in the comment section. And a special thank you to my platinum tier patrons, Horace May, Goosey Q, Panther J, Blue Maiden 28, and Jared Bueller. And to my diamond tier patrons, Jesse Wood and Latrell Smith. Thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon and who is a YouTube channel member. There are some really cool perks associated with being a patron of mine or being a YouTube channel member. I definitely encourage you to check them out. And to everyone that has supported me through those means, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I stream on Twitch, I'm on Twitter, and I'm on Instagram. Links to all of those are down below. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have an amazing day. Take care, guys.